The Rovers Chat YouTube channel is proudly sponsored by SixYardsOut.com. They've got retro football from every era with mugs, phone cases and much more. They also have plenty of Rovers goods including apparel with the famous 94-95 season and this season's kit. Check them out using the link in the description below. Hi uh, everybody and welcome to a brand new edition of Inside the Rovers Academy. I'm delighted to be joined by Mike Sheeran here the boss of the under-18 side and has been with Blackburn Rovers for a few years now, so we'll have seen some change, no doubt, in your time at the club, Mike. Yeah, it's, a, it's been an enjoyable time. Look, really enjoy working with the, with the, the academy. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're going to spend a few minutes talking about your career, and, and it's been a fantastic career as well, and then we'll talk about how you got involved with Rovers and, and what it's been like down at the academy for the last few years um, and hopefully managed to get some really interesting pieces of information I'm sure the fans will be keen to know. Um, let's go all the way back though to start in your academy days. What was academy football even like back in the late 80s, early 90s as you would have been in it? Um, it, it was great to be honest. Yeah, we, we only start playing football uh, for clubs. We can only sign it under 14s. We was called Associated Schoolboys forms um, uh, and you, I had a choice of uh, of quite a few clubs around the northwest at the time, um, big Liverpool fan. So if, if Liverpool ever came in for us, we always said we'd end up going to Liverpool. But I suppose looking back on my career, fortunately they didn't, um, and they ended up going to Man City, which uh, I was there for the, ne the next uh, more or less ten years. And obviously, having that uh, Liverpoolian background probably puts you in quite good stead with quite a lot of our academy players. We seem to pick up a few from the Merseyside area, which is uh, pretty <laughs> pretty handy for you. For you. Yeah, it's, it's been great. You know, uh, obviously, there's a lot of uh, football mad sort of families around Liverpool, and it's a. Uh, you know, I grew up in St. Helens, and you know, we, we were, we were. Uh, it's a rugby league town, but there was plenty yeah. of houses for where we came from. Yeah, I used to live. Uh, my wife used to live just on the outskirts of St. Helens, and taught sort of around there as well. With a lot of the Liverpool Academy lads, she taught a few of those. So I know how rugby league mad it is around there. So interesting. Let's go back to then those Manchester City days. It was just before the Premier League became a thing. Um, you had a good first season in there, um, and made a good partnership with Now Quinn. You look back on those days, and has that been a really good form format for? It? you going forward in, in your career and again going into kind of coaching as well do you look back on that and, and take things from that time at City um, as, as your own formation as a footballer yeah I, I just I was, I was very fortunate you know being at the Man City sort of academy at that, such a young age and um, you know playing with some really top players uh, you know I end up living in digs with uh, Neil Lennon and Michael Hughes so you know that, that was yeah, it, it was great to sort of um you know, be around people who end up having really good careers in the game. And, um, you know, in our youth team, we got to the FA Youth Cup final. Um, we had Jerry Taggart, we had Ashley Ward, you know, we had uh, Martin Margaret, who's the keeper at uh, mm. England, England now. So, very fortunate to be around those sorts of people. And I think it's uh, our coaching staff as well was Tony Buck and Glenn Pardo, who's just recently passed away, which is, you know, really sad to see. But he's a, uh, they, they played a big part in, you know, developing me as a, as a professional football player. Absolutely. And as I said, Premier League just kind of kicked in in 1992, just as you were starting your career. You did you find that that made a big difference at all? A lot of it is made of, a lot is made of the Premier League now, but I kind of vaguely remember as a seven, eight year old, not really knowing that it's going to be that much of a difference between the first division as it was and then the Premier League. Did you notice it as a player? Um, not particularly, because in, in, I ended up playing in the last Division One season. Um, and yeah. maybe debut that sort of season uh, when Leeds won the title um, and then all of a sudden I think going into the Premier League it was all the razzmatazz you know, we, I played in the very first Monday night um, uh, you know uh, game on telly, on telly live on telly and there was a big furor with the I think there was a band uh, on at half time sort of thing in between uh, you know yeah. it, was, uh, it was all the razzmatazz sort of thing but it was uh, you know it's, from my point of view it was just, it was just great because I was, I was doing something I always wanted to do you know ever since he's such a young boy and and I was delighted, as I say, to be playing at such a, such a big club. Um, not as big as what they are now, though, these days. But still the enormous fan base that's still with them now and Main Road being um, a real interesting venue to play at. Obviously, they've moved away from that now. But, yeah, like I say, yeah, a really great club to start with. But then take us through how that kind of transpired into them moving into 
um, Norwich and then Stoke and, and the time that you had in the early part of the 90s there? I had a bit of a nomadic sort of experience after I left yeah. Manchester City. Uh, I didn't really want to, to leave. You know, I felt as if I needed to, to sort of develop my career and, you know, to improve. And I, I generally think, even though initially for the next two, three years, my career wasn't great, but uh, I, I learned a lot about myself and uh, I knew I really wanted to still develop a career and improve. And I had to sort of, you know, ask myself some tough questions and how I wanted to go ahead uh, to try and make this career. And I, I felt I did okay at the end of it. Oh, yeah, no, definitely did. Like, was it tough moving all the way down to East Anglia? And was there injuries involved as well there at your time at Norwich, which was a yeah, struggle? Yeah, yeah there, was, there, was, there was quite a few injuries. But my main injury was I had repetitive hamstring injuries. Uh, right. I always thought, you know, hamstring injuries was for quick people. And I think, uh, I don't know what happened to me. But, uh, but I, I had it about over 18 months and never really got back to, because I was a goal scorer. I think, you know, once I was fit, I was thrown back in the team and it'd go again sort of yeah, thing. So it was like, it was frustrating, to be honest. But um but it was a big learning curve about, you know, what I wanted to do in my life. Yeah, and but you, you say you kind of struggled in your early times, but that time at Stoke, you were very, you were very prolific at Stoke. And um, one, I think you got in the First Division Team of the Year as well in 96, 97. So, um, would you say you were kind of blossoming there in your 20s at Stoke and you you found your groove? I, again, it was, it was just a perfect timing for me. Lou McCarty mm -hmm. loved playing with strikers who, 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 who'd make runs. Um uh, I, had a, I was very fortunate to have a really good team behind me at the time. Um, we had Nigel Gleghorn, we had Kevin Keane, you know, Carl Beeston. Uh, really good creative players and solid players at the back, which we had like, Big Vince Overson, Lavis Sigurdsson and uh, Ian Cranston. So it was like, it was great and it was made up and I, I ended up getting a lot of the, uh, what's the word, um, rewards, I suppose, because you know, we'd, we'd win a lot of games 1-0 and Sheeran scored. So it was like getting into the playoff uh, Semi final against Leicester was was really good, and then but really frustrating when we didn't get to Wembley when uh, Martin O'Neill's Leicester beat us one 0 over two legs. Yeah, and again Stoke, I guess uh, now known for being in the Premier League for a long period of time, but at that time I think it would have been a really great achievement for that team to get through into the Premier League because they spent quite a lot of time in the lower reaches of of English football. I remember in the early days as, as a professional footballer, you know, watching the Stoke v Port Vale derby, and I'm thinking, you know, mm. where, where, where's this? And um, I, I just I remember seeing the fans and you know the the the, uh, the support and the you know the the so fanatical. It was unbelievable, really, for such a younger, uh, it's not younger, um, lower league sort of level at that time. But but when I got the opportunity to play there, I, you know, the fans were, were fantastic with me, and you know, they, they made you feel, you know, ten foot tall every time you went onto the pitch, and uh, you know, I think it was just a good. It was such a good time in my career and I loved it. Yeah, you still look back on that time. You would just say that you look back on that time as your, your favourite time of your career. I know it's hard to pick a, like, a, a time for that. But... Oh, yeah, personally, yes. Uh, but from a team point of view, it was nice being was at Man City for three years in a row. We finished in the top 10. So, you yeah. know, when you when you used to go home and you, you'd end up going to um, probably, you know, nightclubs on a Saturday night and then also the match of the day beyond sort of thing in the, in the background and, you know, you'd be doing an interview on match of the day, I think. What's going on here? But it's yeah. uh, but it was it was just good times. I, I say I, I I loved being at Man City and, uh, and I love being at Stoke City as well because I say the, the personal sort of rewards and the and the, the the possibility of getting back to the Premier League, which is what you know I feel I felt felt as if was was where I wanted to be really. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you just do. mentioned the, the Stoke Derby, <laughs> the Stoke Derby there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we'll get to that. Um, the, the Stoke Derby. I, I kind of. I think of that in my head as similar to the Blackburn Burnley derby being that although it's not the same like obviously it's the same city in Stoke and Port Vale, but it's not quite the same here. But I don't think people understand the ferocity and the feeling of the derby of those two particular derbies unless you're in it. I think a lot of people around the country will look at Blackburn Burnley and go, Yes, we know it's a derby, but we don't know the ferocity of it. And I think maybe the pottery derby is, is similar. Because Port Vale were doing quite well at that time as well. I think you had a few derbies in the the first division as it was then um, and they've subsequently obviously gone the opposite way to Stoke so they probably haven't been a part of his derby for a while but is, was it really fierce on the pitch as well? It, it, it was uh, I'd say the first year I was there uh, we ended up getting in the playoffs and the second year I think we ended up stopping Port Vale getting to the playoffs you know to get into the mm. into the Premier League yeah. so it was like uh, I think we beat them 2-0 later on in the season but yeah you, you did right I remember playing at Port Vale one time and obviously Stoke, Stoke was the bigger club 
without a doubt. And you know, I remember yeah. going out to Vale Park before a game, and I think I just signed a new contract. And I think we had about six thousand. I think the crowd was about ten thousand, six thousand were Stoke fans, and you know, we got a standing ovation just to sign a new contract. So I was like, "What's going on here? These fans are fantastic." But yeah. it's, um, it was just, it's just such a good good time, and I really enjoyed it. I played with some really good players and met some great characters. Um, and uh, you know, I was very grateful for my time at Stoke. I obviously, I wish it could have been longer, to be honest. Well, you went to QPR. Uh, they paid a decent fee for you, and you still scored goals at QPR. But I guess there was financial difficulties, was there, at the club at the time? I suppose that's something that's followed QPR around quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, there was. Um, I was very fortunate, you know. They, they ended up paying quite a big fee for me, and um, you know, I didn't really want to sort of leave Stoke, but I felt like probably mm-hmm. had a better opportunity to to get back into the Premier League, which is where I wanted to be. You know, we're playing alongside John Spencer, Gavin Peacock, Kevin Gallen. You know, Danny Maddox, there were some really good players down at QPR and I, feel, yeah. I felt maybe this is my time. I didn't really want to go to London, to be honest, because I'm a northern boy. Northern, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I actually enjoyed you know, playing for QPR, but it was a tough time because I think we ended up staying up by about a point at the end of the first season. And then, as I say, the second season, I was sold back up to Barnsley. Back to the north. Uh... Back to the north, yeah. That's another thing. You spent quite a bit. You've played more times for Barnsley in the league than you did for anybody else. And you, I guess you mentioned about injury problems early in your career, but you actually managed a lot of, um, cons- I suppose, quite a co- consistency with with Barnsley, playing over thirty games of four seasons in a row, and you know knocking in um, the goals as well. What would you, like, how would you sum up your time at Barnsley? Were you starting to just feel like that you were getting towards? The end of your career, and and you wanted to just be com- comfortable in that environment, or were you still devilishly ambitious? I'm still still ambitious, uh, you know, still ambitious. I felt I felt I, I look at my Barnsley period, and uh, you know, I end up living in Doncaster, and uh, two of my mm. kids were born in Doncaster, so mm. you know, it was a great time from the family point of view. And um, but the, the first couple of years, I felt like we always had that sort of potential to go and get, and, you know, we got to the playoff final, and we played against yeah. Tony Mowbray's Ipswich. In the final and uh, he ended that up scoring in the final. final. Yeah. yeah, but it, I hated the whole day personally because I I was sub uh, and I was probably those three strikers on the bench and I knew I wasn't going to get on. And but during the season, I felt there was a time where I think we won eight games on the bounce for Barnsley and I, I played in every single one of them. And later on, um, you know, we wanted to freshen up. Dave Bassett was our manager at the time, and and I, I never really got back into the team. I was always on the bench, which was uh, personally frustrating. But it was great to see. You know, well, great to be a part of a team getting to the playoff final, which because I'd never actually end up playing at Wembley, so um, okay. it was great to spend had the day down there. And but again, it was galling to sort of see uh, Tony Mowbray score and um, it was <laughs> end up going up. Yeah, I remember I remember watching that playoff final and thinking it was a great spectacle. But I'm sorry, it's not such a positive day for yourself. Um, <laughs> and and then obviously just. Go, you know, finishing off in the north as well, spells at Blackpool, Macclesfield, and then in Shrewsbury as well. Um, overall, like 488 league games, over five, almost 600 games in total. When you were that boy playing at Man City Academy, and you'd have told that young Max Sheeran that he was going to play that many games and score that many goals, do you think that, that Mike would have been happy with that? I think so. I think so. And uh, like I say, you know, people say, you know, what sort of regrets do you have? And uh, I don't have too many. I, I wish I'd have played in the Premier League a lot more. I wish I'd have. Yeah. I, I never earned a promotion, which, you know, I, I got beat in the playoffs three times. Um, I always felt, you know, I played England on 21s. I always felt, you know, I, along, I played alongside some really good good players there. And I felt like I, I could have possibly played for England. But obviously, competition as a striker was uh, quite fierce in those days. So it's a. Uh, I, yeah. I did okay. I did okay, but I still have that sort of desire, and, and I suppose that's obviously taking me to the to what I'm doing now. I suppose I, you know I still love football. I still love, you know, passing on a bit of information and guiding people in the right direction if I can. And I feel as if you know we're doing okay with that sort of thing at the moment. Yeah, definitely. And we'll move on to the academy side of things. Just want to touch back on the England under twenty one period. You got a lot of caps. You scored goals. I mean, it was like you say, it was a very difficult time, I guess, to be an English striker with Alan Shearer. Uh, coming through Les Ferdinand, and they call all the rest, and we know all the names. Um, but just referring that part of your career down to the lads that you're looking after at the moment, and I spoke to Jared uh, last week or the week before, and I asked him about whether 
Rope Blavin Rovers players kind of get passed over for international honours at, at the underage groups just because of the fact that they play for Blackburn Rovers Academy. And he obviously said, you know, that's not what they think about. The, it will, if it comes, it comes. But do you think that it's a little bit of a bias towards other clubs rather than rather than Blackburn in, in the England underage group? Um, we have got plenty of uh, opportunity, uh, plenty of lads who are, you know, who have been in and around the sort of system. Uh, we, I just feel as if, you know, if you if you do play for a so-called Man United or Liverpool or uh, City and Everton, that you know, it's it's an easier path. I must admit, but that's why you know that's the challenge we have with our lads. We have to make sure. You know, we're playing consistently with we're doing what the right thing is for whatever position you're playing in, and we just have to keep being positive and just keep you know keep knocking on the door. And if you are good enough, I'm sure the opportunity will come. It's not just about getting uh, international caps when you're young. You know, we want want lads to get international caps throughout the career. Yeah, absolutely. And just before we do leave your playing days behind, is there any? I mean, you probably get asked this all the time as well. In particular, goal or a match that you look back on and, and think that was a cracking goal. I'd love to have that just on, on repeat and show my kids. <laughs> um, yeah, there's, there's one or two. Yeah, there's one or two. I, I'm, I'll, I said I'm quite content with what, what I did. I, feel, I, feel, I still feel as if there's moments where I could have done a bit more. I uh, you know, mm. scored two at Arsenal, scored two at Chelsea, scored two at Everton. Uh, never quite got a hat trick in my career, which was uh, disappointing, I suppose, as well. But, yeah. but like you say, I did score quite a few goals, so um, I had some good moments. But like I say, I, I have that burning desire to sort of be involved in some sort of promotion or be involved in some sort of uh, you know team uh, reward at the end of the season. And I felt like that was so good about the being in the Youth Cup last year. Um, yeah, and I, I got lots of uh, satisfaction out of that, and I feel as if it's not just about the moment. As I say, it's about the you know, developing to try and improve and to develop, you know, all these young lads' careers in the future, which is, a, I still have a burning desire to do that. Yeah, there you go, some Rovers fans there, go on, go on uh, see if you can find Mike Sheeran's goals at, at Arsenal and Chelsea. Over 150 as well to choose from, so you can, I'm sure you can find some good ones in there. Let's some move on ones. to talk about, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, some, uh, and some Sam Gallagher style off the stomach, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, rebounding into the net ones as well, but they all count. Um, so lot. let's, Let's move on to talk about the young lads then and the knowledge that you're trying to impart over the, the young ones. You're currently under-18s manager. That's not always been your role, of course, in, in Rovers Academy setup. Just talk to us about how you kind of got involved in coaching. Did you do your badges whilst you were still playing or and, and then your journey through to Rovers now? I did. I know, as soon as I probably turned 30 or just before my 30th birthday, I, I, I seem to remember doing you know, my B licence um, when I was still over at Barnes at the time. Um, and it was great just, you know, talking with football minded people, talking about different, you know, um, thoughts and processes that the teams do and the individuals do. And I thought, you know, straight away I got the bug and went through all the courses and I ended up, um, you know, passing my B license, passing, uh, got, got my A license as soon as I finished my career. It was age 33. And uh, that came upon me suddenly. So I straight away, you know, jumped onto the A license course and all of a sudden, I'm working part time at Man City's academy, and then working part time at Liverpool's academy, um, and looking for an opportunity to uh, to earn, a, you know, a living straight away. I, I, I found the bug. I loved doing what I do, and I love working with young, ambitious young, you know, footballers who want to try and make make a living in the game. And, and it's 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 been a bit of a roller coaster ever since. Really, really enjoyed it. And when you came in, involved in Rovers, was it 2016 that you came down to Rovers? Yeah, I think it is now. Yeah, 16. I think, you know, obviously got the, oh. uh, ended up coming for an interview for the, I think it was the 18s assistant role uh, with, with Billy, Billy Bowers, was obviously in charge of the 18s. Uh, and Eric Kinder said, okay, we we're often you the 18s assistant, but we said we'd be keen on talking to you about the, the, the 16s role. Would, would you be interested? And I said, yeah, without a doubt. And um, always admired Blackburn from afar. And, um, Definitely, you know, you know, I remember playing against the youth teams very often. Um, you know, I think Jason Wilcox was in it, Keith Hill, Craig Skinner was was uh, David May. You know, so I always had plenty of challenges and battles against them as a young kid, and obviously played against them quite a few times in my career as well. And always appreciated mm -hmm. the, um, you know, the setup that Blackburn Academy had had. Yeah, definitely in the in the were breaking through kind of Rovers were up at our peak and. Um, Jack Walker obviously investing in the, the training ground. Um, so just going back to the 16s and the and the then promotion into 18s and the FA Youth Cup run that we went on last year, 
do you did you find that particularly gratifying as as a as a coach to be able to bring this group through in, into the run that we had and were you a little i mean how did you feel about the semi final as well so i guess as a supplementary question so the run itself and then the actual semi final because i thought we were we were very good actually on the day we, we were very pleased obviously um you know it's like in any any sort of team the run we had last year was was great and um, you know a big moment for me was the charlton game where we actually scrambled uh, stru- struggled through to with a 1-0 a great goal from uh, sam burns we struggled through and it was um I remember the lads after the game, sort because of, we we weren't overly pleased with the performance. Uh, you know, we said we didn't really want to play. We didn't really look as if we wanted to play. We didn't really uh, had any fluency about our, our game. But we, but we kept a clean sheet and we won the game one 0 And the lads were, were were all looking at us to say, "But we're through, mate. We're through." Or you know, but but we wanted a bit more, um, a bit more desire and a bit more, you know, prince of our principles of play to be shown in, in, on the night. Um, which we went through, and the next couple of weeks were quite tough. But all of a sudden, I say when we go back to the Preston game, it was a fight. We got we were behind two one, and they had a man sent off. And then our, our reaction was great, very positive. And then the confidence and the belief they showed in the Arsenal game was was definitely, obviously, you know, proudest moment as a coach. And it's and it's not just about me. You know, we have a lot of good people at the academy who work hard. Um, as I say, at the moment, I'm the I'm the probably the one who's who's talking to you at this moment in time, but, you know, Ryan Kidd's been really instrumental in what we've been doing. And, you know, Russ Wrigley's been in the academy for quite a long time. And we have, you know, a lot of good stuff leading up through the academy as well. Yeah, absolutely. And we hope to get to speak to a few more of those on the, on this series. It's been great to get the access that we have. And thank you again, Stuart Jones, for being uh, welcoming to that. Um, we'll kind of leave it there in terms of the interview part of it. Anyone who's listening or watching, we are going to have a Q&A that's coming up with Mike in the next couple of days. Um, but thank you so much for your time in terms of taking us through your career there, Mike. I know we only kind of brushed the surface of it, but time is against us on that. Um, but yeah, thank you for that. And um, everybody tune in again for in the next couple of days for the Q&A. The Rovers Chat YouTube channel is proudly sponsored by SixYardsOut.com. They've got retro football from every era with mugs, phone cases and much more. They also have plenty of Rovers goods including apparel with the famous 94-95 season and this season's kit. Check them out using the link in the description below.